This is a review video of conditional probability and conditional expectation. So the conditional probability of an event A given event B is equal to the probability of an intersection of events A and B divided by the probability of event B. I've drawn a Venn diagram of the sample space. So we have the event A and the event B, and we're concerned right here with their intersection, and then we scale the probability of their intersection by the probability of event B. Conditional probability is extremely useful to find the probability of the intersection of two events when we use the product rule. So the probability of the intersection of two events A and B is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B. Conditional probability is also useful for showing independence. So if we show that the conditional probability of A given B is simply equal to the probability of A, we've shown that the events A and B are independent. So that means that knowing what happened in event B tells you nothing about event A. You can also see this by observing that the probability of the events A and B is equal to the product of their intersection. And then you can just apply the definition of conditional probability. So we want to show the law of total expectation. We have two random variables, x and y. And we want to show that the expectation of y is equal to the expectation of the expectation of y given x. And we are using notation here, and I will explain that in a second, but this is very common in using notation. And I will also define conditional expectation carefully. So the first thing we want to observe is that we take expectations of random variables. So what this tells us immediately is that the expectation of y given x is a random variable. And I will show that in a second after we define what conditional expectation is. And conditional expectation is very similar to expectation as we've already seen, except for now instead of just probabilities of events, we're looking at conditional probabilities. And I will also explain what we mean by the abuse of notation. So the expectation of y given x, in this case, this is some of the abuse of notation, we're conditioning on an event. So it's the, that the random variable x takes on a specific value, x prime. It's equal to the summation over all possible values of the random variable y. And I'm just calling that y prime, y prime above y prime times the conditional probability that the random variable y equals y prime, given that the random variable x equals x prime. So this was the abuse of notation, is that we usually don't indicate the events carefully. We just use the random variables. But what we actually mean is that the event that the random variable here takes on a specific value. So now I want to go and talk about um, how conditional expectation in this case is actually a function of the random variable x. So recall what a random variable is. A random variable is a function from a sample space to a ra the range, the range of the random variable x. And this is all from the real. So I've drawn this up here. So we have the sample space of x, and then we also have its range. And when we condition on x equals x star, we're actually conditioning on an event, the, the event that x equals x star. To show this more precisely, when we look at the range, we consider this point in the range x star, and we map it back to the sample space of x. And then we're creating this event, which is actually a subset of the sample space, which is all the little points, a little omega, such that the random variable x equals x star. So this subset, and I'm calling this subset omega prime, big omega prime, is actually the sample space of the random variable, the condition conditional expectation of y given x, and in this case, x is equal to x star. So now, given that, let's go back to showing the law of total expectation. So now, immediately, we can start by taking the expectation of this random variable. So the expectation of the expectation of y given x equals the summation over all possible values of x of the probability of x times 
the random variable, the conditional expectations. That's over all possible values of y. So in order to see what we're doing here, we can also recall that if we let h of x equal the conditional expectation, then the expectation of a function of a of random variable x equals the summation over all possible values of x times the probability of x times the function of the random variable x. So this is why I was making a big deal about showing that the random variable that's the conditional expectation of y given x is actually a function of x because here we're multiplying by the probability of x and this is the actual h of x actual function of the conditional expectation. So now we can make progress rather quickly by using very simple steps. So the first thing that we can do is that when we look at this summation which is the expectation of the expectation of y given x, we can exchange the summation and multiplication. Let's do that. So then we have summation of x and summation of y of y times the probability of x times the probability of y given x. So straight away, if we recall the product rule, which we discussed from the beginning, we know that the probability of y given x times the probability x is actually the probability of y and x. By the product rule, to have the summation of over x and the summation of y of y times the probability of x and y. Now, if we pull out y and we exchange the summation again, we can make more progress. So let's do that. Summation over all y of y times the summation over all x of probability of x and y. So essentially here, we're looking at the joint distribution of x and y. And when we look at the joint distribution of x and y over all possible values of x, we call this marginalization or the law of total probability. And when we do this is that if you look at the joint distribution over all the possibility, possible values of x, what you're left with is simply the probability of y. Then we have the summation of y over all possible values of y of y times the probability of y. And then by definition, we know that this is the expectation 